Thanks, visitor, for joining me on this tour of Fanny Bay in Darwin, Northern Territory. Fanny Bay has become very upmarket with expensive real estate. At one time, it was home to Vestry Meat Works, serviced by the railway, and a large aerial, uh, aerodrome. There are quite a few things I could talk about in connection to Fanny Bay. One topic is the marvelous beach. With its coastal walk, cycle routes, and information about the indigenous people or the saltwater people. The beach really is quite good compared to many of Darwin's beaches, although you still have problems with Portuguese men of war and saltwater crocodiles. You don't really want to go swimming. Another topic that I'm not going to get into is the Fanny Bay Goal or Jail, which is now closed. Pictured from the outside, it's now open to the public and is well worth a visit. An early view of Fanny Bay showing the Aerodome, constructed in 1919, and Vestry Meatworks. One can see that there really was not much settlement. The area was quite empty until it began to develop rapidly in the late 1900s. Instead, I'll talk about the Fanny Bay Drome, or the Ross Smith Aerodrome, first tacked from the bush in 1919. Here we have the crews that serviced the Spitfires at this site during the Second World War. The banyan tree was probably used for hoisting aircraft engines. The airstrip was hastily prepared in 1919 for the arrival of Ross Smith and his Vickers Femi bomber. The paddock behind Fanny Bay Go was chosen. These banyan trees seem to last hundreds of years and it's still in magnificent condition. The topic of today's video is Aviators Park, situated in the center of Fanny Bay. On the 8th of December 1919, Wiggy and Murphy flew from Melbourne and landed in the Northern Territory. They became the first aviators to land in the Northern Territory, landing in Darwin on the 12th of December. One of the first aircraft to land in the newly created strip, 1919, is pictured here. A major event for the Aerodome in Fanny Bay was the great race from England to Australia. In Aviators Park are some bronze plaques detailing the history. In November 1919, Australians Captain Ross Smith and his brother Keith, along with others, 
flew the Vickers Femi aircraft. They were one of a number in a race to be the first to fly from England to Australia with the Australian Prime Minister, Billy Hughes, putting up 10,000 pounds for the first plane that could do the trip in under 30 days. Ross Smith and his crew made the trip in 27 days. Preparing the route through Australia for the aircraft in the race. Days 1 to 5, Boulogne, France to Taranento, Italy. The pearls of our flight soon began. Shortly after reaching the French coast at Boulogne, we ran into a big bank of clouds. We could not go underneath it, so it was practically descended to the ground. We therefore climbed above to a height of 30,000 feet. It was bitterly cold, 25 degrees of frost. Our breath froze. The Vicky's Femmer bomber on arrival. The Vickers Aircraft Company gained immense kudos from the completion of the trip in under 30 days. On day 9, Ross arrived in Persia and camped at the old uh, Turkish battlefield. They were taken care of by the 10th Indian Lancers. There was an enormous storm that night and took a huge crowd of soldiers to hold down the plane and six hours to clear away the debris and sand the next morning. On day 25, landing in Surabaya, Dutch East Indies, that is Indonesia, they landed on a muddy uh, airstrip of reclaimed land and got thoroughly bogged. They had to take off on a bamboo mat 350 yards long with bamboo flying in every direction from the wind prop. Ross and Keith Smith touched down in Darwin at Fanny Bay 3.40 p.m. on the 10th of December 1919 in 27 days. They shared the 10,000 uh, pounds reward with the crew. A monument to Ross Smith for his achievement. Record breakers, pioneers, and a daredevil doctor. The history of aviation in the Northern Territory is quite fascinating and colorful, but probably a bit too much to cover here. The 1920s was the golden age for aviation because with the development of technology, numerous people eagerly shot faster speeds and longer distances from their planes. A procession of aircraft proceeded through Fanny Bay, ranging from frail biplanes to the purpose-built racing passenger aircraft of the 1934 Darwin Centennial Air Race. Sorry, that's the Melbourne Centennial Air Race. Dr. Fenton was the daredevil 